After the tabernacle was erected, Moshe did a thorough counting. He showed that every single contribution was used actually in the building of the edifice, and he f- showed a full reckoning of everything that was contributed. Rashi explains why it is that Moshe did this accounting, because people were accusing him. They accused him of stealing 15 shkolim, 15 silver coins. Moshe showed no. Each particle of gold, each piece of silver was actually used here, there, and he showed that everything that was contributed was actually used in the building. This Rashi is very difficult to understand. Who in his right mind would have suspected Moshe of stealing 15 silver coins? Moshe was a man of God. Moshe went up to the heavens, <clears throat> spoke to Hashem directly. Moshe came down after 40 days and 40 nights of not eating, not drinking. And when he came down the second time, his face was shining to the extent that no one could look at him. But even more, no one in that generation was poor. And when they left Egypt, they left with all of the wealth. These were very, very wealthy people. Who in such a time would have accused a man of God like Moshe of pilfering and no less than 15 silver coins? Very difficult to understand. And I believe the answer to this can be understood with an example. Many years ago, the great Chavetz Chaim was the leader of the Jewish people. We now know him at that position, but at the time he wasn't as famous, wasn't well known. There's a story that was told that one day a poor man came to the Chavetz Chaim's house and the Chavetz Chaim welcomed him in, gave him food, gave him drink. And when the poor man left, the Chavetz Chaim noticed that the man walked out with a spoon. He stole a spoon from the Chavetz Chaim. And the Chavetz Chaim went running after the man. Wait, wait, wait. Don't forget the spoon is milchik. A very touching story that shows the saintliness of the Chavetz Chaim and he was concerned that this man shouldn't violate the laws of Kashras, but here's the point. This man walked into the holy saint's house. This man walked into the Chavetz Chaim and stole a spoon. Who in our generation would ever dream of that? We'd be in such awe of the great Chavetz Chaim. What a holy man. Who could even think of that? And the answer is yes. From a historical perspective, we appreciate who the Chavetz Chaim was. Now, much later in history, we view him as a saint, and none of us would dare do that. But in his times, he was a man, albeit greater than many men, maybe even greater than most men, but a man just like you and I, and he lived a life like you and I. And as great as people understood him to be, his true greatness wasn't understood until long after his death. And I believe that's the answer to Moshe. As much as people perceived and understood how great Moshe was, he was a man. Okay, he spoke to God, but he's still a man with human temptations and people suspected him of stealing. How could they suspect Moshe? Because our appreciation of who Moshe is now isn't the same appreciation that they had then. And because of that, they looked at him as a regular man and they suspected him of stealing. And I believe this Rashi teaches us a fundamental concept. Hashem gives Torah leaders to each generation and gives each generation what they need. When we're living among such people, we look at them, well, he's a rabbi, a scholar, But he's not a luminary, you can't call him the light of his generation. And it's not until long after they're dead that we appreciate how great they were. Our job is to seek out Torah scholars. Our job is to seek out Torah leaders and learn from them. Why? Because they represent the Torah, they represent Hashem's way. They may look like you and I, they may seem like common people, but Hashem sends each generation what it needs, and we have to learn from them, seek them out, and learn God's ways from His messengers.